Hello and welcome to Nithrania YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Beret and in this video we're going to learn how to play Mosaic Story of Civilization published by Forbidden Games who were kind enough to send us the game. Now before we start let me say that the components you're about to see in the video are from this Colossus edition so you will see miniatures instead of the cardboard tokens. So let's get started. To set the game up, place the game board in the middle of the table. Place one fish tile on each board hex, that's a hex with this ship icon. Then take these cache tiles, mix them face down and randomly place one on each space with this symbol. Then take all the trade goods tiles, place them face down and mix them and again randomly place one on each open hex on the game board. Note that only the hexes with all six sides are valid hexes. So for example here we don't have any open hex because there is one side missing. So this is how it should look like when you're done. Now flip all those tiles face up and remove all the tiles with this X symbol. So it will look for example like this. Now we will create the card decks but before that Locate these Empire scoring cards and set them aside for a moment. Take these starting technology cards marked with this S symbol in the top left hand corner. Shuffle them and deal 5 to each player. Shuffle the remaining starting technology cards with other technology cards and create a draw deck. Then cut this technology deck into 3 roughly equal stacks. Then take this Empire scoring card and in a 4 to 6 player game shuffle it into this last stack and place these two stacks on top of that so that this card is in the bottom third of the deck and for a 2 and a 3 player game shuffle it into the middle stack. Then place the deck on the corresponding space on the game board and draw the first 5 cards face up. Now create a build deck in a very similar way but this time split the deck into two roughly equal stacks and shuffle the Empire scoring card to the stack which is at the bottom of the deck. Again place the deck on the corresponding space on the game board and draw the first 5 cards face up. And finally the population and the tax and tariff decks are prepared in the exact same way. Shuffle both decks and randomly choose number of cards based on the number of players in the game. 10 in a 2 and a 3 player game, 12 in a 4 and a 5 player game and 14 in a 6 players game. For the tax and tariff deck, make sure that there is equal number of tax and tariff cards in the final deck. So for example in a 4 player game there should be 6 tax cards and 6 tariff cards. Then take both decks, cut them in half and then take the corresponding empire scoring cards and shuffle them into the bottom half of each deck. Place the decks in the corresponding spaces on the game board and draw the first two cards face up. There is a special setup rule for 2 and 3 player games. In a 3 player game this region called Hispania is not in the game. So don't place any tokens on it. It's as if this region would not even exist on the map. And in a 2 player game even this Gaul region doesn't exist. So both regions in a 2 player game are not existing. Then place the government tiles on the game board. 9 wonder tiles, 9 golden age tiles and also 9 randomly selected civilization achievement tiles. Place the remaining civilization achievement tiles back to the box. Then each player chooses a color and takes all the components of that color, including the player board. 5 cubes which you place in the starting space of each of these 5 tracks and 5 population tokens or miniatures depending on which version of the game you have. Note that there are small and large miniatures or tokens in the game, so start with the 5 smaller ones. Then randomly choose a starting player and that player receives this first player token. The player order starts with this starting player and then continues clockwise. Now starting with the last player in the turn order, in this case the blue player, each player will choose one available leader card and then passes the rest of the cards to the player on the right. Then the next player will choose one of the leader cards and continue like this until each player has chosen one card. The leader has some special unique ability and some starting bonuses. 
then players will draft their starting technology cards. Look at the cards in your hand and choose one of them, place it in front of you, and pass the four remaining cards to the player on your left. Then from the four cards you receive from the player on your right, choose one of those cards and place it in front of you, and again, pass the remaining three cards to the player on your left. Continue like this until all players have chosen five starting technology cards. Now starting with the first player and continuing in a clockwise direction, each player will now place a starting city on the map. You can place that starting city anywhere on the game board, and if you place it on a space with this symbol, take the indicated bonus and remove the token from the game. If you place it on a space with a trade goods token, place the token on your player board in this trade goods area, you now own that token. Now take the starting benefits from your leader, and by the way there are four currencies in the game, stone, food, ideas and money. This is a token for one stone, five stones, one foot, five foot, one idea, five ideas. And after taking the bonuses from your leader, play your starting technology cards. Most of those cards can be played without any restrictions. However, if you want to play a card which has any symbols in this top right hand corner, you first have to have those symbols available on your previously played cards. If you wouldn't be able to play a card, Place it face down in front of you. However, in our example we have those symbols available, so we can play the card face up. After that, take the bonuses and benefits from the cards you have played. Then we can start the game. In Mosaic, players take turns, starting with the first player and then continuing clockwise. This is called one round. On your turn, you may do one of the following eight options. You may work, and that means producing resources like stone, food and ideas. Or you may increase population. The third option is to build a town, city or a project. The fourth option is to build a wonder. Fifth option is to discover a new technology. Option six is to tax the population or merchants and gain money. With the seventh option you may recruit and move military units on the map. And the option number 8 is to create a new government. When the Empire Scoring card is revealed from any of the decks, the Empire Scoring will occur. In each region on the map, the player with the most influence and the second most influence will score victory points. And you gain influence by building cities and towns and wonders and military units. The game ends when the third Empire Scoring card would be revealed or when tiles from two of these three stacks are completely taken by players. In other words, when two of these three stacks are depleted. In either case, perform the Empire scoring and then players will gain additional victory points for each city, town or wonder you have built, for the Golden Age and Civilization achievement tiles, then from building cards and technology cards, and then the player with the most victory points is the winner. I'm going to cover all the actions in the game now and we will start with the work action. With this action you will produce one of the three non-money currencies in the game. Those are stone, food or ideas. Choose one of those currencies, let's say stone, and sum up the number of the production of that currency and the number of your population. In our example that's 3 plus 5, that's 8, and that's how much of that currency you will produce. With the second option you may increase your population. Choose one of the two available population cards, pay the cost indicated at the bottom of the card and increase your population. Then discard the card and replace it with the new one from the deck. So in our example we would pay 5 food, and increase the population by 1. If the deck of population cards would run out, you can still take the action, paying 15 food and gaining 2 population. With the third action you may build a city, town or a project. Choose one of the 5 available build cards and pay the cost. If you choose the town card in the manufactory or farm card, there is no cost. If you want to build a city or a port city, 
pay four stones and two population. So return them to the general supply and reduce your population. And to build the project you need five stones and five ideas. You can use money as a general currency. However, using 2 to 1 ratio, so if you need 4 stones but 1 is missing, you can pay 2 coins instead of the missing stone. However, with money you may never replace the population. If you would like to build a project with these resources, you need 5 ideas and 5 stones. For the 2 missing stones, you would have to pay 4 coins. After you pay the cost, take the card and place it in front of you. Then take the benefits of that card and then flip the new card face up. When you decide to build a city, after paying the cost and taking the benefit from the card, take one of your cities and place it anywhere on the game board in the same way as you do during setup. So if you place it on a hex with this cash symbol, take the benefits from that cash tile and remove the tile from the game. If you place it on the hex with the trade goods token, Take that token and place it on your player board. Place it in any empty space of your player board or if you have the same token already, stack them together. Note that you may never place a city on the hex with the ship symbol, so you may never place a city on a port space. Now, whenever a city is built, place 5 coins from the general supply to this holding area. And the next player to take this stack and tariff action will take all the money in this area. Then when you decide to build a port city, again take the benefits from the card. Then take your port city and build that city in any hex with the ship icon, so in any port on the map. Take the token from that hex, place it on your player board and increase your food production by 3. You can only build ports in these port spaces and vice versa, on these port spaces only the port cities may be built. Similar to building a city, you will place money in this holding area. However, for ports, you place 10 coins from the general supply to this area. When you build a town, either the main factory or the farm town, take the benefits from the card, then take the corresponding token or miniature this is a farm town, this is a manufactory town. And now place that town next to any of your cities or port cities, taking a trade goods or cash token from that space if present. Manufactory towns provide victory points at the end of the game if you have the matching tokens on your player board. Finally, when you decide to build a project, you don't place anything on the map. Project cards are scoring cards, which are awarded at the end of the game. The fourth option is to build a wonder. The first time you build a wonder, you have to pay 20 stones and 5 food. For the second wonder, you have to pay 25 stones and 10 food. If you would build a third one, you would have to pay 30 stones and 15 food and so on. After you pay the cost, choose any of the available wonders. You can choose any tile you want and place it next to your player board for the endgame scoring. Take the corresponding token or the miniature and place it in any available space in a region where you have at least one of your cities or port cities. Note that some wonders may have additional requirements where those wonders can be built. So Colossus for example can only be built in any available port. If such space would not be available you would not be allowed to build that wonder. The fifth option is to discover new technology. To do that you have to spend 5 ideas, then choose one of the available cards and after that draw a new card and place it in the empty space. As I have already described, when you play a card, which doesn't have any prerequisites in this top right hand corner area, you can place the card in your tableau and gain the benefits of that card. If you would play a card with some prerequisites, you must have those icons, those symbols already visible in your play area or in your tableau. If you do, again, play a card and take the benefits. If you wouldn't have all those prerequisites, you may still play the card but face down and anytime later in the game on your turn, when you would meet the requirements, you may flip the card face up and gain the benefits from the card. That doesn't count as an action, so you have it as a free action on your turn. 
And just to clarify, the symbols on the card you have just played are not counted for those prerequisites. You have to have those symbols visible on the previously played cards. The option number 6 is the tax and tariff. With this option, select one of those two available cards, gain the amount of money shown on the card, together with all the money in this holding area. The tariff cards give you money for unique trade goods in your play area, so that's why it's beneficial to collect as many unique tokens as possible. Then the tax and tariff production are the numbers on these last two tracks on your player board. After gaining the money, keep the card in your play area because of these unrest points for the endgame scoring and to save some space you can slide the card under your leader card. Unrest points are basically the negative victory points at the end of the game. Then draw the new card face up. If all the tax and tariff cards would run out, you can still take the action, you can use the tax or tariff action and you can gain the money using the corresponding formulas. With the seventh action, the military action, you can recruit units, you may move the units, you can do one or the other or both. To recruit a unit, you must pay five coins for each unit and you may recruit maximum two units per action. And you may recruit infantry units or cavalry units, or if you have the appropriate technology, you may also recruit siege engines. When recruiting units, you may place them in any region on the map which contains at least one of your cities or port cities. And these military units don't occupy any specific hexes, so they don't block placing any new cities or towns in those hexes. So you may place these units in any empty hex in that region or somewhere next to that region. Just make sure you know which region those units are assigned to. Then after recruiting the units, or even if you didn't recruit any units, you may move all of your units on the map. For each unit you move, you have to spend one coin. For that one coin, you may move a unit from one region into any adjacent region, even if you don't have any of your cities or port cities in that region. Now, for the clarity, Greece is not adjacent to Egypt. However, Egypt is adjacent to this Numibia region. Then Italy is adjacent to Greece, it's also adjacent to the Numibia region and Numibia is adjacent to Hispania. And finally, the last option on your turn is to choose one of these government tiles. You can choose any of those available tiles. Then pay the cost, which is usually ideas and some symbols which you must have already available in your tableau. And as long as you have that government tile, you also have the special ability of that tile. At any time you may only have one government tile. If you purchase a new one, return the previous one back to the game board. It is now available to other players for purchase. In addition, when you own a government tile, once per game and per government tile, you may clear one offer, meaning you can take all the cards from the offer area, for example technology, population, build or tax and tariff, you may take all those cards, put them back at the bottom of the deck and draw the new cards face up. When you do, flip the government tile to the other side so that this arrow is not visible. That indicates that you have used that ability and you may not use it with the same government tile in the game. So those are all the actions in the game and now as a free action on your turn, if you meet the conditions on any of these golden age cards, or the Civilization Achievement cards, you may claim that tile and place that tile in front of you, you will score those victory points at the end of the game. You can claim any number of these tiles during the same action as long as you meet all those requirements. When any player reveals an Empire scoring card from any of the four decks, the Empire scoring will take place, but first the current player will finish their actions and will finish their turn. After that, each region in the game will be scored. In each region, two players with the most influence will gain victory points, and you gain two influence points for each of your cities in that region, either a city or a port city or even for a wonder and one influence point for each of your military units and towns. 
plus any bonuses from your tableau. In this example we have a blue player with a city, port city and a military unit. That's 2, 4 and 5 influence points. Then we have a yellow player with 2 military units, that's 2 influence points. But the yellow player has the formations card, which gives them 2 additional influence points in any region where they have the infantry unit. So that's 4 influence points for the yellow player. And the red player has 2 influence points for the city, this town belongs to another region. Now the player with the second most influence in the region will score 2 victory points. The player with the most influence points will score 3 victory points plus 1 victory point for each city and port city and also potentially a wonder in that region regardless of who owns those cities and wonders. So if for example this wonder would belong to the red player, the red player would have 2 plus 2, 4 influence points. The blue player with most influence would gain 3 victory points, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 victory points in total. In case of a tie for the most influence, in this example all players, blue, yellow and red would have 4 influence points. All players receive full amount of those victory points. So that would be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 victory points for the entire region. If, however, there is only one leader and there is a tie for the second place, those players would get no victory points. After scoring the regions, government tiles in players' possessions allow them to score victory points during each empire scoring. One last note for the clarification of some card effects. To control a region, only one player as a sole leader must have the most influence in the region. The game can end in two different ways. First, if two of these three stacks of tiles are depleted, or when the third Empire Scoring card is revealed. In either case, you would perform the Empire Scoring building, and because this is a third card, you would have maximum three scorings in each game. And just to reiterate, even if you wouldn't reveal the third card, and the game would end by depleting two of these stacks, you would still perform the third Empire scoring, you would finish the current round, and then perform one last final round of the game. After that, the game is over. Remember, there are maximum three Empire scorings in the game, so if you would reveal another Empire scoring card during these final rounds of the game, that Empire scoring would not take place. Then, in addition to the victory points you have accumulated over the course of the game, you would score two victory points for each of your cities and port cities, one victory point for each town, then all wanderers would score victory points based on the wonder tile, so here for example two victory points for each city in that region, then score the victory points on the civilization achievement tiles and the golden age tiles, and then score victory points from your cards, usually from towns or some technology cards and from the project cards. Then subtract the victory points from your unrest. For each point of unrest lose one victory point and then the player with the most points is the winner. So that's how you play Mosaic Story of Civilization. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can support the channel on the Patreon page or you can click the thank you button under the video to provide us with some symbolic support. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Berec and hope to see you next time.